Hi, this is David, and we are once again talking about this Java Spring Boot application that I've been working on for a number of videos. In the last video, recall, we did some basic error handling. Here in the controller, we checked to see if any of the input parameters in the JSON in the body are empty, and if they are, then we want to return a HTTP 400 with some kind of message here like that and make sure that the output is null, the, the value is null for this add numbers thing. Um, we also did something similar. If somebody tries to pass in Bob as the person name, we'd, we'd try to form with that because nobody likes Bob. He's just, uh, he's just a bad guy. Well, here I want to go uh, a step up because this is putting a lot of logic in our controller and I like to keep the controller as clean as possible. So what I'm going to show you today is uh, a more elegant way in which we can move some of this error handling out of the controller and into some of the services that it calls. Uh, the, the basic strategy is that we're going to create a custom exception and if an error occurs inside of one of our services we'll just throw that custom exception and pass a message into it what the error is and then in here we'll just catch that exception. So let's start by creating a custom exception. In here now I like to keep I like to create a folder just for my exceptions so I'll do that right here exceptions here and inside of that I'm going to create a new file I'll call it uh, missing arguments exception because I'm going to use it uh, to handle these this part right here if somebody's missing the first number or the second number. And here then I want to uh, just throw that exception. So in here I want to make sure this is in fact an exception. So I'll do that. It oops, extends exception. That's good. And what's my squiggly line here is telling me uh, I need to add a default version ID because that's what exceptions it's a property that's implemented by exceptions from which I'm inheriting. And then I also like to put in here some uh, constructors. And so I like to have every one of my custom exceptions, I want to add an exception that takes care of string message. And um, in that, I'm not going to do anything special here. Actually, I want to make a capital S for the string. Message. I'm just going to call super. Okay. In fact, I'll call this error message instead of message. Error message. Nothing special here. I just really like to have this. And the same thing with. Uh, I'll pass in throwable ERR and it'll do basically the same thing. It'll just call the parent class. ERR. So this is typically when I create an exception. 99% of my exceptions, my custom exceptions just look like that. It's just something that I know uh, that I've created that is for a specific problem that I have in my code. All right. Um, now inside of my, you notice that the controller right here, it really has one thing that does the work, the add numbers. So if I go to that inside of my math service implementation, it's right here. And what I want to do here is once I'm Once I'm in here, there we go. Here's where it actually adds the numbers. And here, I want to just check. I want to say, in fact, the check that I'm going to do is really similar to this check up here. Right there. So in here, I'm going to check to see, I'm not passing in the person name, so I can't check that. but. If there is something missing here, then I want to throw a new, what do they call it? Missing arguments 
exception. And I'll pass in as a string. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll create a variable for this. And that variable will look pretty similar to this message right here. Missing input required. So I'll just say first name, first number, and second number are required. How about that? Right there. And I'll just throw that. Now there is a rule in Java that says, first of all, I import that, that Uh, oh, I didn't make this public. That's important. So in my missing exception, I guess I forgot the word public in here. That's important. And there's still a squiggly line there. And it looks like I did that already. Change the misguided exception to public. And I need to make this constructor public also. Thank you, Visual Studio Code. Anything else? And then here's the rule in Java that uh, says that Okay, um, I cannot throw an exception in a method unless that method already knows to accept, expect that that might be thrown. And that's where I say add throws declaration, and that added this bit at the top here. In the method declaration, I say that this might throw a missing arguments exception. And then anything that calls this has, can be prepared to handle that exception. Now, of course, this actually has an interface, so I'm going to have to put that in the interface as well. I think that's what the squiggly line right here is doing. It's saying add exception to the interface. So what that did was it added it to this interface right here. It looks like I have from an earlier video I created this mock object here, so I better put that in there as well. Make sure that it also throws that exception because it's in the interface from which it's Inheriting, oops, wrong place. It belongs in that right there. And to better import that namespace there. And it looks like that's all good. So what I've done here now, after taking care of all the stuff that just Java just requires, is I'm checking in my service if the first number and second number are null, then I will throw this exception. I'll pass, in, pass up a message to the, the calling program. What's the calling program? What's well, this controller right here? So here, I'm going to skip over checking for first name and first number and last number. I'm only going to check for person number, and I'll say person name is required just for that. Um, and right here is where I'm calling add number. What I want to do with this is I want to wrap that up in a try catch. So I'm going to say try catch and I'm going to catch the missing arguments exception. I'll call it ex right there and this line right here I want to move up inside of the try except that I have to declare it outside of there because I'm using it later on. So here I want to call this, and this might throw a missing arguments exception. And what will happen when it throws a missing argument exception is that is where I want to do this stuff. So down here missing, I'm not going to hard code it, I'm just going to grab whatever the message is that was passed up. In this case, that message will be something like missing input required first number and second number are required. I guess I got some redundant English in there. Um, so uh, I'll get that message I'll generate this output right here, just like I did last time. I don't, didn't get a good result, so I'll return null as the resulting sum, and that message will be passed in. And then my response entity will be of that type. One of these will include this thing here, and it'll also be include an HTTP 400 right here. 
So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I think we're good here. Uh, looks like I've got some squiggly lines here to clean up. What is wrong with that? String message cannot be resolved to a variable. Person name cannot be resolved to a variable, and yet it's right up there. Why is that? Maybe I have an extra curly brace somewhere. This goes to here. I think that's it. I don't think I need this curly brace right there. That was it. And that should just about everything. I have one more squiggly line here. Control dot says possible. Missing arguments exception. I think I am not. Let's see. And this method here is not catching this. Let's find out what happens if I stop this. Well, let's just re rerun it and we'll see what the error is. And the error is unhandled exception type right here. So why is that unhandled? I am in my uh, add numbers. Oh, this one up here doesn't handle it. So I, I am actually calling add numbers from another method, my get method. And so I need to do a control dot and add numbers here. Let me see. Oh, not here. Let's see. Unhandled exception right here. Control dot here, add throws declaration. And that's what I want to do right there. All right, now let's try this. We'll debug the application here. It is running just fine right now. And if I run this again with good inputs, 10, 20, and David, I got 30. The sum is David. But if I omit one of these. This shouldn't change anything from last video. Last video I would get an exception that said return a null, missing input. The message is a little bit different. I'm still getting a 400 uh, but the difference is where that's happening. That is happening if I open up my controller here and set a breakpoint right there it used to be I had it. I was checking for it here, and now I'm checking for it in a, a, a service, and then I'm going to catch that. I'm throwing an exception and catching that here in the controller. So what that means is, if I pass in some bad input here, like a missing first number, and then step through this, that that pass that check passed just fine. It's not Bob, so that passed just fine. I declare my variable sum, and here's where I actually try to call add numbers. I'll step into that. And here I am, and after a bit of logging here, notice that first number is null, so that should be a problem. And I'm going to check this. If first number equals null or second number equals null, then I want to throw this custom exception right here. I step through it, and here I am in the controller catching that exception. I grab the message right here, and then I... Uh, construct my output here, which is the JSON that's going to come back, add numbers output, which is a sum of null and a message of missing input, and then I return a 400 with that output in the body. And that's what's going to happen. So a valid question is, you know, why bother to do this? Why refactor it this way Because if I'm going to get pretty much the same results? And there's two good reasons why. One is that I'm making my controller a little bit cleaner because I'm taking some of this error handling outside of that and putting it in a separate service. But I think the more important advantage is that I am, uh, this will work if I have much more complex logic. So in this sort of simple contrived example, I'm just adding two numbers together. But in the real world, when you build your web services, you're probably going to have a service that calls another service that calls another service. And some of those things are going to go out and uh, read databases and write to databases and call those services and look at the file system and so on. And that's it's a pretty complex thing. And anywhere inside of the bowels of any one of those services, something might go wrong. And you could put a try catch around it and throw a custom exception, or you could just check the value of something and throw a custom exception. And in those cases, if you don't swallow that exception somewhere 
higher up in the call stack, then it'll bubble up all the way to the controller and you can just catch it right here. And that's a huge advantage. You've got one place to check your exceptions that are thrown anywhere within here. Uh, now, um, this isn't the simplest way. In the next video, I'll show you an even simpler way to do this, which takes advantage of some of the uh, magic of Spring. But right now, I've shown you how to create a custom exception, throw that exception when there's a problem, and then catch it and return an appropriate response to the client. This is David. Thank you for watching.